So everyone, well, today we're going to be looking at how to create a render setup in 3 ds Max 2016 that will look something sort of like we've got in the image here. I already have the th that scene set up on another screen so I can try and replicate it as best as I can. So first off we're just going to jump straight into Max, create our teapot that we're just going to work from as a reference mesh. If you have a mesh to work from that's awesome you can do that although the size of the scene and the values may change depending on the size of the model that you have uh, and also the placement of the lights so we can just change this to about let's go for 40 as a value to make sure that's zeroed off in the world as well create our plane which is going to be our background or floor zero that off in the world as well I like to work with symmetry in this scene so we're going to make sure we've got one segment that we can just cut off later on length we can set that to about 250 and width about 400 so there's 200 on each side of the mesh convert that straight to an editable poly not a deformable see poly just get that back and delete one side as our symmetry modifier, make sure that's flipped, and then we can start making our back wall. You can also use the side wall as well if you want to have more a more closed off scene, or if you're viewing it from such of an angle like this where you would see this. I mean, you could always just stretch this right the way out, but the amount of distance you've got to go, you probably would be better just pulling this up and maybe just moving this wall backwards but for now we're just going to work with the back wall as it works well with what we want to achieve so I'm just going to change this color to grey so we're just working the same color there take the grid off so at the moment if we went to render this with the lighting setup we would get a quite hard edge here so what we're going to want to do is chamfer this edge so we have a more smooth gradient between the background and the foreground. So let's do this about 15 I think. And then add some more segments. Maybe about 4 maybe, maybe 5. Just so you get that smooth curve upwards. Let's click OK for that. As you can see already in the just the the basic flat render you've got some form of soft wall so let's add our camera in first off actually before we add the camera in what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I like to work in layers in 3ds max so put all the models and things so let's call this meshes uh, um, just so then you can just always click them off and say you've got another model that you're working with you can just click it off and work on that model saves just a lot of cluttered scene then let's create a new one I can tell you what, we won't to actually do that yet also in terms of the background if you're working with uh, quite a few different things you don't want to be sacked in the background and changing that so what you can do is go into object properties by right clicking it and untick show frozen in grey and then freeze the selection so now we can't select that but you can also still select it in the the panel over here let's now let's add our camera let's go into the create button panel cameras let's do a target light and drag this out here let's move this to the side right okay highlight that unselect that so we're just working with the camera point over here and zero that off in the world grab the camera and let's just move it to somewhere we want what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the camera view here just to see what sort of thing we've got so we can get a decent right I'm going to make sure this is zeroed off in the world isn't it? zero Zero. Height wise, we might want to change that a bit. Move this back. Oh, should I? Right, 
bit so now at the distance that we can pull this back we may want to just something like this will do for now so let's pull that bit further back and a little bit further bit further there you go that should look fairly nice now so now if we go into I'm seeing I'm going to work in perspective on this top one here so now what we have is our camera the mesh that we're going to be rendering and also the background as well so now let's put this camera into a new layer rename that layer we can call it camera plus lights because the lights can go in there as well make sure you got the the blue part clicked on so, so then whatever you create is going to go into that part as well let's add our lights into the scene and go on to you may start off in standard so you've got omni skylights target spot free spot but click this um, drop down box and go into photometric and click target light it will come up with this here I'm just going to click no for now but I'll show you how you can also click this on later um, let's go and just go to the top view and drag one out just drag it up to there select this and zero the target point out on the grid and then select the actual light itself so, and then just pull that up so we've got one light in our scene Let's give that a quick render see what comes out like so not too bad it's it's a start at least <laughs> so what we're going to want for this part I'm just going to go into this we're going to want a light here which is which acts as a rim light and then a cold light over here and a warmer light over here that is shown in this so as you can see this is like a rim light which is highlighting all the edges here uh, a cold light over here and a more warmer orange looking light over here as you can see orange and a more light blue so the way we can do this is first of all before we start doing any of that just make sure we've clicked on uh, shadows and ray traced shadows I like to work with the rectangular shape and just set that to 100 and 100 obviously depending on the size of your scene and the size of your object that you're making this for these may change drastically but everything else may be sort of a similar value the end intensity and things like that you may just want to change a bit just to get a better feeling for your scene so let's get our first light so to, to make this to make this a more blue looking light at the moment we've just got the color as this default white if we click on Kelvin it makes as you can see it went orange already so if we up this value to about 10,000 it starts to go more blue so the lower the value the more warm the higher the value the colder the light is let's go about 14,500 let's go for as you can see that's quite blue already let's move this over to the side maybe let's see what we've got going on here let's do this sometimes you can work on these as well because these are quite handy so let's do that 200 by about minus 30 and about to do a 90 height just so it's on the edge of the scene there but still slightly in front of the mo model let's make sure we've got everything right over here so rectangle we're working with shadow parameters they will find universal spherical they are all fine you can change the intensity of the light as you can see it changes it up and down but we're just going to keep ours at 1500 for now then simply control i mean shift drag over to duplicate it onto the other side let's call this warm light and then click on the other one and call it cold light as you can see warm and cold lights just so then it's easy to distinguish between the two 
so from here we can change this let's have this about minus 1000 I mean 100, uh, 150 don't know how that didn't do it then 150 then we can have it about minus 100 so then this this one here is more towards the front of the scene this one's to the side and then the third light is going to be towards the back and the top so we want this to be a warmer light so we can change this to about 4000 I think see there you go so we've got that warm, warm light over here and that smoother light over the colder light over here I'm change this to about 4500 because that is quite a strong orange at the moment and then what we can do is maybe maybe up this a bit so we can higher the light up so about 120 110 110 will do uh, so we've got our first and second light in so we just give that a quick render so as we can see we can we've got this orange looking part over here and the blue looking over here still a bit of a way to go but it's a start at least to click on this part here and just shift and drag towards the back of the scene so as you can see we've got this light over here now let's call this rim light or you can call it edge light or something or you don't need to name it at all um, let's see where we can place this I think this may be a bit higher so about 135 and minus 10 so we are still using that sort of triangular three point and then maybe about 50 just so then it's still towards the back it's not directly over the model right and then we were going to want the just use the default color so it's that still that white color at the moment so what i'm going to do because we are quite close up to the model i'm going to move the camera angle a bit further back for now and if we give that a quick render we're starting to get something similar to what we have in terms of the light so what I'm going to do is probably go back into this and move the background back so it doesn't accept that light so much and I might just scale that a bit so then we get a more solid smooth gradient this would have been easier if we changed to done a bigger angle of the gradient before but we can still do it now so let's go back into the render see how that look, that's looking now still accepting this light here a bit too much but we can go straight back into this just move it back a bit move this back there's a lot of just tweaking values tweaking your scene a bit and leaving the model in one place um, so that's not looking too bad but at the moment we're using scanline renderer and not mental ray which this scene is set up for mental ray which is why we use the ray traced shadows and things like that so in 2016 3ds max the renderer can be accessed just at the top here just click on to mental ray and then i'll change the renderer but in previous versions if you are on something earlier if you scroll down to the bottom in the common tab there is a sign renderer and you can just go on production and just make sure you've got mental ray assigned just untick that and then click render see the difference of what we've got so let's get this other scene up so in terms of lighting we've still we've got we've got quite a close lighting solution here at the moment we've got that blue light here the orange light over here and that 
white light here. Probably that white light is a bit strong at the moment, so the background may need to go a bit further back. But in terms of the lighting solution, we still have a fair, fairly decent thing. What I'm going to do as well, I'm going to go onto this. And I'm going to go onto segments. I'm just going to up the segments just so then the model is a lot smoother for for our render, and we can see better how it's going to look. So there you go. I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go on to this. I'm just going to go on to plane. I'm going to go on to this part here. I'm going to pull this pull this down a bit. Probably doesn't matter, but I'm just going to do it just in just in case we we are accepting a bit too much of that light. I'm going to pull this camera angle down just to make sure we're not selecting anything but the camera. So let's give this a quick final render before we go into the last part of the scene setup. So we're getting there definitely. This camera angle is a bit higher as you can see the, the top a bit more but we are very very close to our target setup so if we can close these down so our next step is materials you don't have to use materials you can just use this as a setup itself but the materials do quite a good job of changing the the dynamic of the scene so let's go into material let's go into so at the moment this first default material is just the standard if you click onto it because we're using mental rate we can you access these mental ray materials there's a fair few of them but we're going to want the arc and design one and what we can do is we're going to apply this one as our background material so we're going to call that background underscore mat and then we can just access that there make sure we got that do the background uh, we're not going to want it to be reflective at all so we can just press zero on that uh, and then click on this and we can make a new arc, arc and design material or it's arch I think I'm not too sure and call that mesh material so there's a lot of different things you can set in here, but for the one in this picture here, we use by IOR, so which is this thing, and set that to a higher value, so as a steeper curve on that, and set this to do a fairly blue. Yeah, so it's still quite a dark blue, but it's still a blue in itself. Let's do that backlit. And then I think that's much fairly much it for the things going to this. Click render production. And as you can see, it's already looking something fairly similar to what we have on this here. Right, I will let this render and then start back up when it's done. We've now rendered the image and it is looking fairly similar, if very similar to the one we've got here. And I think that that's pretty much it. You may you may change these a bit so that's a bit more of a, a gradient. You may change the the curve in the in the wall here so it's a bit softer and this may need to be a bit less of a of a blue and more of a, a whitish colour but in terms of that that's up to whatever scene you've got and wherever your model plays how big your model is and such things like that so as I said before I would show what the those exposure settings are they are 
in if I can find it right they are something quality something quality something displacement global luminosity they should be in here right we go give me one minute and then I will be back once I've found where they are they are in rendering and if we go on to exposure control and then we'll automatically what the if you click yes when you create those photometric lights it automatically sets them to um, logarithmic and this is what it does to the scene it's just makes the scene a lot brighter and just gives it an overall bigger exposure to the light but you can always come in and just if you have clicked on yes I've I want those controls you can always go into rendering and then um, environment or exposure control and change them to something different or you can just have none at all but for this scene we don't have any at all we just got the scene itself so thanks for everyone for watching uh, I hope this has been useful for you and I hope you use it on your scenes to render your models um, but other than that thanks for watching and bye